Members, my name is Emily Cook. I represent Texas Right to Life in opposition to Senate Bill 1944. I serve as our general counsel and I lead our patient advocacy team. Over the Easter weekend alone, we fielded calls from seven families. This bill codifies behavior that is detrimental to my clients. Let's take the patient liaison provision. This already exists. They're called caseworkers assigned to every ICU, every ICU patient. I've had to fire several on behalf of my clients because the caseworkers simply are used to pressure families to consent to removal of life-sustaining treatment. The bill's conflict of interest provision, to be a neutral arbiter that's required by constitutional due process, the entire committee would have to be made up of individuals not affiliated with the hospital in any way. The bill does not provide for this. The number of people who can attend the ethics committee meeting on behalf of the patient Usually there are 10 to 16 people sitting around a ta the table affiliated with the hospital. 16 people versus the five, and that number of five subject to a hospital policy? The bill does not even safeguard the right to have an attorney present. Speaking of the hospital policies the bill attempts to create, the hospitals, they already have these policies, but they will not release them to families or their counsel. How would anyone know whether the policies comport with the bill's provisions? You wouldn't unless you sued and engaged in discovery. Which brings me to my next point. It's interesting that the stakeholders in this 1944 have inserted a clause that takes attorneys, uh, purports to take attorneys out of the list uh, of the registry of people willing to help. Several attorneys are on this list maintained by dishes, including myself. I, I get it that the hospitals don't like getting sued, but my clients also do not like having the decision-making rights stripped away from them. The stakeholders who have drafted this bill are simply attempting to put lipstick on a pig. At the end of the day, someone else is empowered to decide whether to cause involuntary passive euthanasia that's characterized by a recent appellate court opinion. The real stakeholders are the endless families and patients that I encounter every day, from Amarillo, Abilene, Tyler, Greenville, Temple, and Denison just two weeks ago, who are have been subject to the 10-day rule in just the past 12 months. I urge you th to recognize that Senate Bill 1944 would not help these individuals. Emily, I have a question. Sure. Do you, in your opinion, and you're a physician, I mean, I'm sorry, you're a, a lawyer, um, yeah. that do you think 1944 is worse than what we have today? Absolutely. Uh, because it actually s sanctions the behavior, um, it, it sanctions the behavior that's already going on in these disputes, and you know, putting it under statute authority gives me less ability to um, say, you know, this caseworker isn't working because they could come back and say, well, the patient li this is their patient liaison that we're mandated by law to do. It, it, it negates some of those provisions. There's other, there's other provisions like the second opinion provision that. Um, Ms. Long was, was discussing a minute ago. Um, we run into this all the time. They're, they're, they're empty promises. Of course you can have a second opinion, but only a second opinion here with the colleagues with whom I work with every day. When we start trying to get second opinions from outside the facility, the roadblocks, uh, well, you have to have temporary privileges and administration's not willing to do that. And I'm constantly, constantly counseling clients to push back on the narrative um, that they can't do something. Because when the hospitals are motivated enough to do something, then treatment gets provided, transfers happen. One of the issues that, um, that Ms. Long uh, wasn't able to, to bring up in her case, and, and this issue with her family, I mean, this is just about a month old. I mean, we just resolved this case. Um, the facility came and said, the doctors told her mom that if you don't agree to, life, to removing life support, it doesn't matter. We're getting an ethics consult, um, and, and you can't do anything about it. We can take that decision from you. Miraculously, as often happens when an attorney steps into the scene, um, that tone changes. I think, uh, yes, that, that's great that we're able to help in those facilities, but how many more in those situations, but how many more families is this going on where they haven't had the luxury, they haven't called Texas Rights Life? I mean, that should not be the calling Texas Rights Life and, and getting an attorney involved should not be the benchmark to where your life is valuable and someone else's isn't. Um, and so there's I, I, what, I, what, I, what I, I'm afraid of in Senate Bill 1944 is this false security blanket of, um, well, we fixed all these issues. Because when you peel back the layers, the bill doesn't actually fix them on a practical level. It's just on, looks good on paper. 
Thank you for your input.